All right, looks like we are live. Welcome everyone. Happy Monday. Happy Creative Cloud Monday. For those of you who are new, my name is Terry White, worldwide design and photography evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today here on various channels that I like to stream live on. So uh, if you're watching on Twitter, great. You're watching on Facebook, awesome. YouTube, LinkedIn, and even Behance. So I'm, I'm doing a multicast today on uh, five different channels. So hopefully the technology will continue to work for us and we can get through it. So with that said, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, something that is long overdue, something that uh, long overdue in terms of an update and also long overdue in terms of me streaming about it. Uh, at Adobe Max, about a month ago, we released, has it been a month? December? November? Yeah, it's been a month ago. Uh, we released a brand new, kind of just quietly released a brand new version of the Creative Cloud desktop app. And what that means is that you've got um, a newer app to, um, to interact with your Creative Cloud desktop, your applications, your libraries, all of the above. So we're going to take a look at what that means and, of course, um, We'll look at uh, those new features in that app as well. So with that said, let me go ahead and actually just do one thing real quick here. This is still bugging me. Just don't know of another way to do this. There we go. All right. So with that said, um, Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So I'll switch over to my desktop. I've got Creative Cloud uh, kind of in a minimized state, just as a reminder, and this is even bigger than the application used to be. It used to be um, this, the sliver of an application that like either if you're on a Mac, drop down from the top, or if you're Windows, popped up from the bottom. And it was just, it, it never took up your full screen. So you have this big, beautiful monitor and you were ended up with this little tiny window for your Creative Cloud. Well, that all goes away uh, as of this update because I can just make this window as big as I need it to be. Um, so right off the bat, and the most common place people will end up is on this page because it deals with your apps. This is where you will go in and you will um, install new apps, look for new apps, uh, check on updates, and just interact with, um, with Creative Cloud that way. Now, with that said, uh, there are some some missing, I shouldn't say missing, but hidden things in this, this part of the interface as well. Just one second here. Something is being a little uncooperative over here. All right, hang on one sec. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. And let me mute myself. There we go. All right. Um, so when I say hidden things that, at first glance, what you see is the current apps, and that's great. But, uh, for example, I went to go set up a new machine, and I realized that there was a couple of apps that weren't listed in this new interface because they're older apps or apps that are, you know, that we're not uh, further developing on. So, like Adobe Muse, for example. And I was like, where's Adobe Muse? It's here now because I installed it. But where is it? How come I can't get to it? And it's because in, my, in your settings... There is an apps setting that if you scroll all the way down, I believe, show older apps. So if you turn that on, that will show you older apps that you um, that you could install if you didn't already have it installed. Now that was off and it was still showing Adobe Muse because I had, had Muse installed on this machine all along. So therefore I didn't have to worry about um, installing it. But if I was looking for those installers for those old older apps, um, that's where I would find it. Also on this apps tab in the settings, uh, you'll notice that there's an auto update category and you can even do it per app. So for example, if you always like to keep Photoshop updated, you can auto update Photoshop, but turn off auto update on the ones that you don't want to auto update because certain things may be project specific. So you wouldn't want a new version of the software coming out in the middle of a project that you know, you're working on with a team of people and you don't want the new update and they haven't got the new update. So you could turn off auto update altogether or turn it off on specific applications that you don't want it auto updating on. In other words, you want to click that button when there's time for an update. 
So, um, and that's that's actually a great way to do that is to not make it global, all off or all on, but to make it on, but then you can turn it off for the things that you don't want it on for. Um, syncing, while we're here, uh, this will let you pause the Creative Cloud syncing. So this is the syncing of your libraries and your syn the syncing of your Creative Cloud files folder. So if you wanted to turn that off at any given, or pause it, not turn it off, but if you wanted to pause it at any, at any given time, you could do that. You can also control the speed. So if you run into an internet, um, you have a cap on your internet and you don't want it to go any faster than it can, you can also cap that. You can also turn it down. Uh, so when we go back to the main screen, uh, again, all the desktop apps that you know and love are here, but you'll also notice at the very top of the screen um, that there are categories. So here are all the desktop apps, but if I wanted to learn about the mobile apps, even though I'm on my desktop, what's pretty cool about this is that I can see them all. And then if I wanted to install, for example, Photoshop Express on my phone, I could actually send the link to it either via text or email to my phone, tap the link and install it. So that way um, it's, a, it's an easy way to see everything that's here and quickly get it onto your device. And last category up here is the, the web-based solutions that don't necessarily have an application. So like, for example, Adobe Portfolio is a great uh, example of that. There is no application for Adobe Portfolio. It is 100% web-based. Um, so therefore you, you could launch it and get to it right here. Lightroom does have an app. It has a desktop app. It has a mobile app and it also has a web version. So you can go to the web version of Lightroom and all the rest are here as well. Um, what if you didn't know what you wanted? Like for example, maybe you came into Creative Cloud knowing a specific application like Photoshop, but you didn't know what you would need for photography or you didn't know what you would need for um, for video editing, uh, so forth and so on. So on the left-hand side over here, you'll see the category. So photography, design and layout, video and motion, illustration, UX, UI design, um, Acrobat and PDF, 3D and AR, social media, beta apps. So if there's something that you wanted to explore that you're not currently doing, so for example, let's say I didn't, I don't, I'm not an illustrator, so I can go into illustration. I can see which applications apply to Illustration for both desktop, web, and mobile. And uh, if I wanted to learn more, I could just click on the little um, graduation cap there and start taking courses in that particular application. And these courses are, yes, they're included in your membership. There's nothing extra to pay for. So you can learn how to design a logo, learn uh, the Manipulate Artwork course, and the Getting Started course, and the Drawing course. So these courses are built in and part of your Creative Cloud membership. You can also get some inspiration. You can see things that were made with that application. So you can scroll through and check out things that may inspire you to want to create more. And anytime there's a view more, you can uh, click it and it will take you out of the app into a web browser where you can drill down and go even further. Um, so this is, this is just, again, some of the things you don't think about just because you can just quickly get in and install your apps and go on your way, but there's a lot more here than meets the eye. Um, and we're going to see some uh, a few more things in just a minute. Last week, before I leave this page, re resource links um, behind my head here, uh, stock, fonts, Behance, tutorials, and the support community. So even tutorials that aren't necessarily in these categories, because there are more cat tutorials than there are in the categories, you can get to all of them in one spot there. Okay, so what else can I do with a Creative Cloud desktop app? Um, now that I'm, I, I can, pretty cool that I'm in this and I can see it. Um, one of the things that uh, you'll notice is that this is all about applications and tutorials for those applications. What about my stuff? What about the stuff that I create? So in the upper left-hand corner, there's a tab called apps. That's the one we've been in the entire time that shows us uh, all the apps, any updates that are pending, all the categories, so forth and so on. But also if you click on your work, that will take it, to, take it to your stuff, the things that you've been creating. So the dozens of Creative Cloud libraries that I have here, including my Adobe Live 2019 library that, that I've been working on since the beginning of the year with all the things that we've been using for these live streams and stuff that I've been creating along the way, all that stuff's here. Um, and it's also organized by category. So my colors, my color themes, graphics, 
uh, character styles and so forth. And don't let this window fool you. It's not just for looking. You can also drag and drop and, and uh, copy and move things around in this display as well. So if you like this color theme, but you wanted it in a different uh, library, you can just drag it over to the other library that you want it in and move it around and do it that way. Um, the next thing you'll notice over here on the right hand side, I just don't want to miss this. There's a little person icon with a plus. And if I click that, that will give me or take me to the, um, take me to the area of the site over here. Let me see. I'm not sure where that, yeah, there it is. It'll take me to the area of this where I can actually put in an email address and share this library and control what that person can do. So can view means they can view it. They can use the stuff in it, but they can't make any changes. Can edit means I trust this person to be able to add and delete and change things in the library because we're both working on the same project with the same level of authorship, uh, whatever you want to call that. So can view, read only, can edit, they can do everything you can do. So they can go in and delete things, they can go add things, they can go change things. So you would only give that to someone obviously that you're working with that you trust it. Um, Let's see, uh, on the right hand side, you have the ability to create, to add things to the library. So I can add things to my library, even here in Creative Cloud. We're used to doing that in the apps themselves. So if I want to add something um, to a library, I could do that in Illustrator, I can do it in Photoshop, Premiere Pro, whatever. But you can also do it right here on the desktop, as well as deleting things and changing things uh, and duplicating things here in the Creative Cloud area. Now, that is all pretty good and, and well, but what's new? Like you could, could kind of do some of that stuff before. Well, you'll notice on the, on the up here in the upper left hand corner, there's a plus sign and that plus sign. Um, so someone's asking, uh, Jamie's asking, how do I unauthorize to share? So you would go back to the, uh, you might have to do that from the web version of it, but you can go back to that screen where you've listed who, sh who you shared it to and accept it. And you can easily remove that person or revoke their privileges if you didn't want that person to, to access that library anymore. Let's say the project's over and you want to use, use that library for other things and other people. You can absolutely remove people once you've shared it to them at any given time. Um, so next up, if I want to go in and... Um, if I click the plus sign, you would think, well, oh, okay, he's just going to create a new library. And yes, that is the case. But you also notice there's, there's something I would have never discovered unless I clicked on it. Uh, and if I was never trying to create a new library, I would have never discovered it. And that's the ability to follow public libraries. So this is very new, the ability to follow libraries that are just open to the public. In other words, ones that you didn't create, your colleagues didn't create, but someone else created. So... Uh, I like Kyle Webster's brushes, so I can follow that library and uh, they'll take me out to it to do it. And here's another one here, illustrations by Delazine. I can do that. Uh, Eva Icons, uh, Tweeboji, Google uh, Design Materials, which I'm already following. I'm also already following the Web Gradients one. Uh, let me just click on this one. Let me see what comes up for this one. So I could copy this to my work or follow this library. So I'm going to go ahead and follow it. So now I'm following that library and we can go ahead and do the same thing for Kyle Webster as well. There's Kyle's brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and follow that library as well. So now that I'm following those libraries, when I click done in my Creative Cloud desktop app, those libraries will show up over here in my, in my list of libraries. So even though, um, even though I did not, um, create those libraries, I still have access to them. So for example, the uh, web design library that I'm, or web gradients library that I'm following is here. I forgot which was the other one that I follow. I think it was an icon library. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, there's the Google material design one. Here's fonts for print design. Basically any of the ones with a globe on them are the ones that I follow. So there's the Eva icons one. And so, for example, let's say I go look at all these various, I'm sure they're going to be cool icons once they load. I can say that if I want one of those icons, I can drag it into my library so I don't have to keep looking at this giant library of icons. And this looks like it's going to take a second for that. So let's move on. And I'm going to wait for that to load. Let's go on to the Web Gradients one. That one I, I do use on a regular basis. 
So here's one that, that just, again, a public library that I follow with some cool gradients in it. So for example, I like this um, Rainy Asheville. So if I scroll back up to my library, uh, my Adobe Live 2019 library and that Rainy Asheville, I'll just drag it over. And now I can use that gradient in Photoshop in probably Illustrator, as well, at least Photoshop. I'm not sure about Illustrator. Um, but I can use these, these gradients any way that I want going forward. Um, so I can just drag them in, and now those will be in my library. And of course, it does not remove them from the public library because that would be a bad thing. Let's see. Uh, there's my gradient. Where's the ones I just added? Uh, maybe I need to refresh this. Not sure why it's not displaying them, or at least I'm not seeing them, but they should be there. I've done this before. Did I drag them into the right one? Hang on, folks. Let me try it one more time. Let's go see if the, okay, so these loaded. So let's go drag in an icon. Let's see if that works. All right, let's drag in uh, the Wi-Fi icon. All right, that should work. There it is. So there's the Wi-Fi icon. So that does work. I might just be scrolling past the gradients here, but they should be here. All right. But anyway, um, that is how you would easily add something from a public library to your library is just by dragging it over. So let's do one more. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let's see if I got anything cool I can get from the Google design material. So these are just colors. Um, which are kind of cool. And again, let's take one of these and drag it in. Yeah, for some reason, my colors and gradients aren't updating, but they are there. They're in the library. It's just this display is not updating for some reason. So if I were to, let's test it. If I were to pop over to Photoshop and I were to open something, And I would go to my libraries. There we are. No, oh, it's not there. Dun, 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 dun. I am in the right library. Not sure why this library is not updating, but those items should be there. Let's go to graphics. Yeah, that came over just fine. That's available to me. Not sure why the gradients and uh, colors aren't popping in yet. It could be that they just haven't synced over. Ah, let's finish this one. All right, that's a mystery. Not sure why the colors and gradients didn't come over. It's probably because you guys are watching live. But anyway, uh, everything has, should come over because again, some of this stuff, like this color, for example, is one of the ones that I did grab from uh, that, that library before. So I know it works. Uh, just not sure why the colors and gradients aren't coming over now, but the graphics are. Anyway, let's go back to the Creative Cloud desktop. And so again, following public libraries, grabbing things from them, of course, sharing your libraries, using your libraries. And uh, speaking of libraries and using them and creating them for other people, up until now, the Creative Cloud libraries have been pretty much for creatives. In other words, you you use them in your creative applications. Uh, but if you're working in an environment where you need to create content for people to use that aren't creatives, let's say, colors, character styles, graphics. Uh, you're creating this re repository of things for the rest of your organization to use. Well, chances are your organization, if they're not creatives, they're using Office products. They're using Word, they're using PowerPoint. Yes, PowerPoint. They're using PowerPoint, they're using Word, they're using Excel, they're using those things. So um, I'm happy to present and announce that for the first time, here I am in PowerPoint, and now PowerPoint has a Creative Cloud add-in, so or Office does. So, for example, if I click on it here in PowerPoint, 
I get that same access to my libraries and there's that same Wi-Fi icon that I just added a few minutes ago. And I can now use content that my designers created in my everyday work as an office worker. So for those of you who are saying, well, how'd you get that Creative Cloud thing in there in the first place? You would go up to, I believe it is in the insert menu, come down to add-ins, get add-ins, and then you would search for Adobe in the store, which again, it's free, but you would search for, yeah, and I need to quit out of this and redo it. But anyway, you would search the store for Adobe Creative Cloud and you will get that Creative Cloud add-in and just click to add it, that's it. So that's all I did to bring this panel in. Uh, that icon will be there, so even if they close it, you'll have access to bring that back up anytime you want and they can switch libraries to all the ones that are, are shared with them or they have access to. So they're gonna sign in with an Adobe ID, which is free, but any uh, libraries you've shared to them, they would then be able to access in their Office products as well. All right. Um, if you follow and they make it non-public, do you lose the item? Do you lose the use of them? Um, so that's a good question. So let's say you follow. I say I follow that gradient library or that icon library, and they decide to make it not public one day. Um, you should. You definitely shouldn't lose anything you've copied to your libraries. Um, but will the libraries stay in your list? Uh, if it's not public anymore. And that's what I don't know. I don't know what happens if they unpublic it. In other words, if they make it non-public anymore, would you still have access to it? That I don't know. Um, that's a good question. Because I know there, there was a library that I had um, brought in. And I noticed that for some reason I had a copy of it. Like, for example, I think it was the Google, it was, no, it was the web design or web gradient one. And I, I, I noticed that there was one with a globe and one without the globe. I was like, why do I have a copy? So I deleted the one without the globe, the one without the globe. So I, I would imagine that you can keep one that's no longer linked to the public one anymore. Granted, you won't get any updates to it, but that's okay. As long as you're happy with the stuff that you have in it. Uh, so you can, um, you can at least do that um, to, to basically keep your copy of it. I don't know that if you didn't do that or didn't do anything up front to keep a copy of it, what would happen if somebody that made it public made it not public anymore? That I've not seen because we haven't seen that happen yet. All right, so, but great question. Um, let's see, what else? So one more thing. And even though this was, we're talking about the uh, desktop app and I've shown you pretty much everything I wanted to show you today with that. Let's take a look at one more thing, and that I'm, I have my iPad in my hand here, and that is uh, the fact that Creative Cloud is a mobile app as well. So I'm in the Creative Cloud uh, iOS or iPad OS version of it, and at the very bottom, you see I have tutorials, your work, fonts, apps, so forth and so on. So if I go to libraries, for example, at the very top, I can see um, my various libraries that I have, including, uh, as they're updating here, uh, that Adobe Live 2019 library. And if I go into that in a second, it'll start loading all the things in. I'll see everything that's that's been added to that library, including that Wi-Fi icon, there it is. So I have access to the same stuff, even in my mobile apps. What's new, so if someone, if someone's at the door, What's new is that you also have uh, fonts. So you had all this before with Creative Cloud um, on, your, on your mobile device, but there's a new tab at the very bottom called fonts. And what the fonts tab does is it lets you, for the first time, browse the thousands of fonts that you have available to you in Creative Cloud and you have the act you have access to install them on your device so for example um photoshop on the ipad which is here now by the way just got an update today with um select subject but photoshop on the ipad if you brought over a psd with fonts in it that you had not installed well it would still work it would, it would display those fonts and let you use them but if there was a font you had activated on the desktop, had not brought over in a 
in a document yet and you just want to start using it, you want to start typing in that font, well, you'll notice that there are browse Adobe fonts. And again, this is the thousands and thousands of Adobe fonts you have access to as a Creative Cloud customer. But if I go to installed fonts, there are nine fonts installed on this machine. And if I, I can't remember if it's at the top of this one or the, yeah, let's go all the way to the top. There it is. If I go to the top of browse fonts, you notice there's a category that's called active fonts not on this device. And there's 370 of them in my case. If I tap on this, this will show me all the fonts I've activated on the desktop that are not yet on my mobile device. So that, that saves me all the trouble of having to search. Let's see, what did I use again on my desktop? I don't have it with me. I've just brought out my iPad. I'm traveling. I can see all the fonts I've ever used on the desktop that I have active right now and then install them right here on my device. So if I say that I want to use Abolition, I can go ahead and tap Install, and it is now installing that font and downloading it here on my iPad. And here's the beauty of it. It's not just for Photoshop. It's not just for Illustrator that's coming. This installs the font on your iPad. So that means that any application, even non-Adobe applications, that can use fonts would see this font in the list. Now, I have to say that with a caveat because not all fonts, or I shouldn't, shouldn't say fonts, not all apps are smart enough to have a way to look at the system font, so to speak. In other words, some apps you install, third-party apps, other apps, just have a list of fonts that they, that they include with the app. They don't let it look at what else is installed on the machine. So it depends on the app, but if the app can look at a font list that's of fonts that's available from the iPad, then Abolition would show up to that application, even if it's not an Adobe application. So now if I were to go, since I install that now, if I were to go to Photoshop, for example, and I were, I was working on this, so let's go ahead and hit mask and be done with it. And if I were to now hit my type tool and tap, and go to my font list, there's Abolition at the very top because I just installed that using the Creative Cloud app on my mobile device. So the same fonts that I use on the desktop, the same ones I, I sync whenever I want on my desktop are now here on my mobile device as well. So with that said, um, the Creative Cloud desktop app is very awesome now, very cool. I definitely like using it compared to that little skinny one that we've had for so long. Um, and it's so much easier and nicer and, and as far as the layout is concerned. Libraries are awesome. I use libraries all the time. And of course, um, having fonts now available, not just a few, not just you know a couple dozen, not just the ones that come with a particular app, but being able to not only sync any font from the, from the Adobe fonts list, but know which ones I've used before and sync those and have those available to me in any app that can use fonts. So that's a big thing, by the way, for those of you that are gonna be working across mobile and desktop. All right, so with that said, um, I if I missed any questions, I will do a quick scan just to see if I missed anything. Uh, we are pretty much gonna wrap it up. Uh, I think I answered that one. And again, hello all the folks from Germany, Switzerland, snowy Indiana, uh, the UK. Welcome everybody. And Aunt Pruitt is over there on Behance. Hey Aunt, what's going on? And lots of folks over on here on Twitter. I'm just trying scanning for qu any last quick questions that I may have missed. And I think I got everything. And my Facebook questions aren't loading. So sorry, Facebook. I can't see your questions because I'm in the new Facebook interface and I can't wait to get back out of it. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Let me just do a quick refresh. Okay. Um, and is that... M Amel or Aunt Carter in Cleveland, welcome. And just let me make sure that I'm not missing. I'm just checking one more thing for questions over here before I get ready. 
give it a, before I end the stream. Ah, there, there, I see all the comments now. There they are. There they are. All right, lots of highs. Wow, and the following public libraries. How would I search for public libraries? Um, yeah, it, it's Tom, it's just what's in the list. There, there's not a search just yet. Uh, da, 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 but good question. I imagine that when there are more than will fit on that window, then there will be a search. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're curating those public libraries for now. All right. Hey, Michael South, what's going on? Joel. All right. And Joel, Joel, I'm glad you liked it. And I think I got everything. Is the fonts manager like suitcase? Okay. So yes and no. Um, Adobe manages fonts with creative cloud that are Adobe fonts. Suitcase manages all the other fonts. So if you bought fonts from anywhere, then you'd manage them in suitcase. So that's why I want to say it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty much the same concept that they, they both manage fonts. It just depends on which fonts you're talking about. So the font manager is like suitcase, but only for Adobe fonts. All right. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for watching and we'll tune in tomorrow for some cool things with InDesign. I'm getting back to my InDesign Tuesday, hopefully tomorrow. And with that said, I want to thank everybody again. Cheers and thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.